<laughs> I have a feeling we are. Uh, this is going to be an interesting ride over the next year on technology. Another pioneer in uh, the technology of 3D printing, um, and one of the only minds who, underst uh, who understands and is thinking about these things um, in a, um, uh, I think, in a very useful way. He has a new book out, first, one, uh, first to address uh, some of these things um, and will be a valuable source for the, our, our future, um, is Hod uh, Lipson. He is, um, he's got a book, Fabricated 3D Printing, uh, The Promise and Peril of a Machine That Can Make Almost Anything. Welcome. How are you, sir? Pleasure to be here. Uh, good to have you. Um, did you see the last segment? Yeah. Okay. So Cody is, is printing gun parts which is a good thing and can be a bad thing. And you kind of talk about it in your book, you know, talk about a, you talk about a, a novel where people, it, you know, the print, the 3D printer is like an inkjet, everybody's got one. And at first, right, they do great things. And then it goes ugly. So uh, Cory Doctorow uh, wrote in his novel about uh, these two sides of this technology and he, and he beautifully uh, uh, essentially displayed this, the, the two sides, the promise and the peril. The fact that on one hand it unleashes a huge amount of creativity, you can do things you couldn't do before. On the other hand it opens up some new possibilities and uh, it's, uh, in the end it's where people take the technology. And there is no way to stop this. I don't it's, think we should, but there's also no way to stop it. It's, it's, it's very much like computers. Computers, uh, you, know, you can do good things, you can do bad things, they've done good and bad. By far they've done more good than bad, but uh, it's, it's the same kind of powerful technology. I think. Um, um, the printing of meat, I mean that's real, right? Uh, we've done, you know, that's one of printing food is one of the things that kind of took us by surprise. It it's, sound good or good for you. Uh, well, if you if you look at uh, printed uh, pastries, for example, and chocolate and things like that, it's probably not good for you, but it's uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's okay, pretty good. good. It's All pretty right. good. Okay, so show me what you have because these things are printed. Yeah, so these are just examples. Uh, you know, we tend to focus in the media on plastic printing, but really, it's important to understand you can print in stainless steel. This is a piece of a, of a, of a gas turbine. Uh, you printed this? This is, uh, this, uh, we didn't uh, print it ourselves, but this is on a commercial uh, stainless steel printer uh, made by EOS. This is a titanium part. Manufacturing and machining is no longer necessary. Exactly. I think, uh, well, it's, it's definitely Holy heading that cow. way. This is a titanium nose implant. And, uh, nose in, like, like. Yeah, like for, yeah, for real implant, and there, there's just no way to make something like this. There's no, it's, it doesn't replace an existing technique. It's a new thing. Um, these, uh, this is, uh, this is another example of something that we. Uh, this is a, a uh, 3D printed uh, ceramic cuneiform, a 3,000 year old uh, tablet, discovered, scanned, replicated, printed. It feels, it weighs, it has the same texture. As the original, so how are you going to know what's the real is? What's well, not? The, the experts can tell, but in terms of uh, faxing things, will I be around, able to print a diamond? Uh, that's probably going to be very difficult because of the material, not because okay. of the shape. Um, and what is that? Uh, this is a robot uh, component that we made in the lab. And what's interesting about this, it's it works. It's made out of multiple materials, and it's all printed in one shot. So the whole thing working. Uh, you come piece, in to clean it up. Do you even have to clean it up? Just a little bit. It kind of washes off with water, so there's no... Oh, my gosh. You rinse it comes it out, out like this? And you rinse it off, and, and it, it works. So, so that's... Uh, it, it, this technology is really moving away from just printing parts and, you know, a, a, uh, you know, a shower curtain so, ring to, to things that work. How long before everybody has this? I think uh, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, less than a decade before people okay. have access to this. And what, um, what then uh, happens to patents? Well, that's one of the interesting things that Cory Doctorow talks about, and um, it's, it's one of these, it's, it's a little bit like music. So what happened to music when people could download music and play it anywhere? Good things and bad things happen. On one hand, a lot of people could unleash their creative talent and get that uh, mm -hmm. distributed quickly. On the other hand, there were some skirmishes around intellectual property, and somehow it settled in this kind of digital right management combined with reasonable pricing and it's sort of settled somewhere so, in the middle. So um, 
the, the, the problem with this is, and, and w let's take a break here, but the problem with this is, is um, people who have control now are not going to have control in the same way that they have. Do you understand what I mean? Everything, if, if, at least the way I look at the world, and this is what a lot of the strife is coming from that people don't really understand, I think, is people are trying to hang on to what they have. You're not going to have. No, none of it. No, it's not going to be centralized anymore. Right. None of it is. Right. Um, and when we come back, I want to I ask you about how do, how, how, how do you govern on, uh, with this kind of tech, with what we know is coming? the trap that we're in and how we avoid the traps. Back in a minute. Do you know who Penn Jillette is? No. Okay, Penn Jillette is a, um, a, a, just a brilliant guy. He's, you don't usually follow that with, he's a magician in Vegas, um, but he's absolutely brilliant. And he believes that the, the future is very, very bright because you cannot put things back in a bottle. Men will be free. And um, he thinks that it's a totally different world that is on the horizon. And I agree with him. However, you know who Ray Kurzweil is? Okay, so Ray says to me uh, a few weeks ago, I said, if Google can come up with a, com with a computer that's even in me eventually, that is monitoring everything I do, helping me, and it knows me so well, it knows what my next step is. If I'm somebody who wants to put Google out of business, how would Google ever want to help me? Why don't they thwart that? And he said, ah, well, they won't. That's not a good enough answer for me. The, the other side of it is they get big enough to where then they start to ask for regulation and they partner with the people in power now who also want to keep their power. How does this not become a repressive they, situation? They, they try to repress, but it, it doesn't work. And I think there's plenty of examples. I mean, you can just uh, look at uh, Facebook, okay, rising from nowhere and suddenly becoming uh, the same scale as Google. And it's not that Google didn't, couldn't do it, uh, but uh, they can't stop it and they're competing now. And what happens is as these opportunities open up, uh, there's uh, small things can rise very quickly. You have uh, people who can write software applications that will very quickly uh, spread and take over. It's, it's much harder to stop these things. And, uh, and the same thing is going to happen now also with physical objects. It's already happened with software. You have companies that come out of nowhere and become huge companies in the software area. The same thing is now going to be able to uh, happen with physical things. What does, what does government look like in 20 years from now? I think it's going to, it will need to be a lot more technology savvy. I don't think uh, you can uh, control or even regulate any of this by just putting laws out and, and just... Uh, laws and will the, be outdated by it, the time it's, they're it's, passed. It's, it's, uh, law doesn't keep, out, keep, keep up with, with the technology, but technology itself can sometimes help uh, with these things, and I think that uh, that might be a solution. I don't know what that means yet. That could be a very good thing or a very bad thing. That's right. It's, it's, it's very open-ended. We don't know where technology is going either in what it can do and, and how it can regulate. Do you, do you, are you a religious man or a spiritual man at all? No. Okay. Uh, the story of the Bible Tower of Babel. Yeah. God destroys it, but he's the good God. He's not the angry God. It's the happy side of God. And he does it because he says if they can do this, they can do anything. Did any side of you ever say, we're approaching some place that is is wonderful and absolutely terrifying because we could just destroy ourselves. You know, the technology is very powerful. I, I think I'm a kind of techno-utopian uh, in the sense that I think, uh, uh, yes, technology can open up a lot of these hazards, but really uh, it's, uh, the, the good things that we can do with this uh, far uh, will outpace. I hope we can uh, talk again. Things. We're out of time. I hope we can talk again um, more on this as we continue the year on technology and the decisions that we face right in front of us. Back in a minute.